Hi guys, it's a faculty Ranganath and Spain Kondala back again with uh, the Indus Valley Civilization discussion that we were doing. Now, see in the last class, I in the in the last in the previous video of Indus Valley Civilization, I did discuss with you about uh, certain features which are special and unique to Indus Valley Civilization, its culture, its traditions, etc. Now, let us quickly observe some of the important town planning features of Indus Valley Civilization. Now, one most important aspect of Indus Valley Civilization is its remarkable town planning. Its town planning is well laid out, well established, and, and, and uh, one thing that's common is um, all the Indus Valley cities seem to have somewhat similar layout across their cities. In the West has a high mound and East has a low flat form. In pretty much every Indus Valley city tends to have a citadel on the high mound. Citadels are large constructions which are synonymous with uh, some sort of uh, rolling structures. Okay, and all Indus Valley cities are great planned cities, and streets are always in cardinal direction, means east, west, north, south. Traffic through east, through west true north and true south now and indus valley also tends to show extensive amount of incremental settlement pattern that is a 30 feet road is actually fed by a 20 feet road which is fed by a 10 feet road so everything in indus valley in terms of urban planning looks quite established and quite uh, planned out and working class in Indus Valley civilization completely live in, seems to be living only in the lower town and uh, all Indus cities show evidence of uh, wild sectors or mounds and Indus is perfectly a class structured society. Now as I said in the last class, we've seen these in the last video, and this is the grid plan, and this is basically the 90 degree group plan structure of Indus Valley civilization, and most of the houses tend to be in well planned out structure. Now, this is classic example of great bar, a stepped water tank structure in Mohenjo-daro. It is a stepped water tank structure in Mohenjo-daro. Now, this is the two-layered plan. Western high mound is this. Eastern low platform is this. If imagined, Indus Valley's typical structure might have looked like this. So, you enter in the east like this. You enter in the east here. And... Uh, Go all the way towards the west, and this is the high mound of the west. So, in the west, it is a little on the top, east, it is in the lower city. Even by gross estimates, we observe nearly 10,000 workers must have worked for almost 400 days, more than a year, to actually build just to the city of Mohenjo Daro. Another remarkable urban planning structure of the Indus Valley civilization is its water management the water management now if you observe water well now i told you in one of the uh, videos or the previous video the previous class that uh, in this valley every house tends to have a well well established water well and connected to a well and also there are a drain canal these are basically the drain canals layer perfectly with brick structures in fact in some of the recent excavations we even observed indus valley cities having artificial terracotta made garbage pits which are slightly lower than the regular seating of the regular floor level there are three types of buildings public buildings private buildings and housing complexes in indus valley civilization there are granaries on the western part granaries are basically a grain storehouse 
now this basically why they are in the western part is western part is on a high mount so sto grain is stored there so there is continuous wind probably avoids moth formation or spoiling of food due to extensive amount of air banwali are two very important indus valley structures with only a single walled mount the lower part of indus valley city has one small room construction found which might have been used as quarters for the working classes and a very advanced drainage system is uh, probably the most prominent feature of indus valley civilization dolagara also shows evidences of large gateways like this almost like an arched gateway the interesting part is the gateway has something written on the top with gypsum now what it is is non deciphered because we do not know what the indus valley language actually looks like now what you are seeing on this particular screen is a classic example of a indus valley typical squat toilet <laughs> sorry guys at a time when most of the world was involved in wars the people of indus valley were actually involved in hygiene and sanitation that makes indus valley one of the most unique things this is a typical well an artistic depiction of bronagra looks like this now you can see the uh, arched uh, gateway here this is the arch arch gateway of indus valley and typical granary on the high mount observed in indus valley civilization harappa falls on the banks of ravi river this is very important for your prelims harappa falls on the ravi river it is one of the first excavated sites by daya ram Sahili citadel has been found. Great granary has been found. Circular platforms, probably for thrashing of the grains, has been found in Harappa. Two room barracks have been found in Harappa. Even bronze items have been found in Harappa area. Lothal is another important Indus Valley city found in uh, Gujarat of uh, India. Now. In Lothal, we see that the city of Lothal is actually divided into six parts. Lothal also has an artificial dockyard approximately of 230 feet. Lothal definitely might have been a trading center, mainly important and synonymous with the sea trade of Indus Valley civilization. Houses or buildings have entrances directly into the streets. Now, that is something rarity and different because in general, Indus Valley civilization houses do not have entrances straight into the street. They always have side entrances, but only in Lothal, they tend to have entrances straight into the mainstream. Rice husk, artificial dockyard and bead making industry have been found in Lothal. Now, Mohenjo-daro, one of the largest Indus Valley cities found in Indus River in Pakistan and it was excavated by Rakhal Das Banerjee, one of the largest Indus sites. The word literally Mohenjo-daro means mound of death. The granary of Mohenjo-daro is the largest. Evans is the Great Bath. Great Bath is a classic example of water control and water uh, regulation system of Indus Valley civilization most probably. Mohenjo-daro's great bath was for some sort of ritual bathing. Baked bricks were used as layering for the floor and then gypsum was used as a sealant in between the bricks. Uh, Mohenjo-daro also shows evidence of galleries on the top. Galleries are basically smaller rooms on the top. Now, there is a bronze girl, dancing girl statue which has also been observed in Lothal made out of lost wax technique a unique technique where in order to make a object they first make a wax model of the object then cover it with clay then bake it once it is baked all the wax inside melts but the clay becomes like a hollow all the liquid wax is removed and liquid bronze is poured into the clay hollow that way you actually get an exact replica of the wax model in bronze now this is a technique which is used even today in metal crafts across india now harappa also manjadaro also shows evidence of plenty of seals pasupadinada seal 
mother goddess seal unicorn seal seals are basically like a flat two square inch by two square inch um made of a steatite or a soap stone soft flat slab type of thing with some sort of image like for example pasupadinada seal consists of a yogi sitting in yogic posture and uh, having four animals no rhinoceros humped bull elephant and tiger on four sides and two antelopes near the legs now we observe this v s smith called it pasupadi nada seal or proto shiva seal observed tremendously and most of the seals seals tend to have some sort of text written on the top now we don't know what that text is all about another important uh, place of indus valley civilization in india rajasthan mein it is uh, kali bangan well known for bangle making industry uh, also for a plowed fields yeah. with furrows houses have private wells in kali bangan completely and brick flat form granaries have been observed like square granaries kali bangan shows evidence of camel bones now we do not know if these guys really consumed camel we have found camel bones remember for your prelims and even whenever you discuss hamesha yaad rakh lo just because camel bones have been found it does not mean that they were even eating camel we do not know the evidence and kali bangan also does not show evidence of no does not show evidence of baked bricks and or drains and dolabura uh, in uh, gujarat one of the most unique platforms in one of the previous videos of, of you've seen this Dolavira's speciality is a series of check dams across the city. Now, this may be because Dolavira might have been a consistent victim of flooding and overflow of water, and probably they were using check dams to control the flow of water on a regular basis. Dolavira shows evidence of that. Surkatoda, another important uh, Indus Valley site. shows excavations most of the excavation released horse bones now this has been a previous year prelims question rather very controversial question horse bones have been found in surkatoda but historians are still confused still not very clear if horse bones that have been found can be considered as an evidence that people in indus in surkatoda knew what horses are because other than the horse bones we do not see any presence of horses chalo friends another city of indus valley where uh, we see the city without any citadel no citadel no basically no big uh, no construction type of uh, administrative type of buildings and uh, shortugai shortugai is the outermost indus valley settlement when architecture we observe there is considerable amount of variation in this valley housing but all houses general feature is central open courtyard and all houses majority of the general feature is side entrances doors windows do not open into the main street mud bricks and kill fire bricks have been observed sometimes even stone like in kutch and saurashtra in this valley i told previously as well that they do show evidence of stone architecture doors windows have very good evidence of wood and mat and uh, most in this valley floors are hard packed earth what you you go to old houses you see the red color coating on the floor that's basically clay and lead just very quickly uh, made and then applied on uh, applied on the floor that one that is observed in indus valley civilization doorways windows rarely very rarely open into the main street most houses most view into the house is actually blocked there central open courtyard rooms in all the sides and even staircases have are wooden staircases and every house is separated from the other house by um, at least minimum 20 feet no man's land no man's land and uh, doors 
also have this brick sockets like this this is this is this brick socket house type doors we observe even today as well if you observe that's how wooden frames come in in the this is basically inlaid into the brick in the wall we do this even today in regular housing that's observed in Indus Valley civilization and almost all the big houses tend to have some sort of water well inside this classic example of central open courtyard housing with flat roof Indus Valley have only flat roof three most important constructions of Indus Valley very prominent great bath observed in Mohenjo-daro basically a probably a public water tank or some sort of spiritual bath Mohenjo-daro medikta it is made of burnt bricks with a gypsum sealant it has galleries on the top also well attached with a canal then comes the great granary which is harappa and uh, a brick platform construction and uh, two room apartments are also been observed near the great granary of harappa remains of wheat and barley have been observed in harappa dockyard was observed in lothal artificial dockyard now we are we have sent lothal to uh, unesco's uh, world heritage uh, consideration hopefully we will be able to get it very soon this is an example of the great bath that you can see it's almost 2.4 meter deep now you can see how the entire thing is brick layered and this is also sealed with gypsum some sealant so that way it is completely waterproof and water resistant this is great bath now that's how the you can see in the sides all the galleries are there due to presence of galleries that many people confuse that this is some sort of spiritual center not just a bath or public bath and uh, even the bricks are used in the english system of layering that is you know this cross by cross like this the english lay english way of laying a brick we do this even today even today bricks are laid this way only even today the bricks are laid this way and this is an ex artistic expression of uh, the city of Dholavira. You can see Dholavira has a lot of, you know, this, these are these are the floodgates, the dam gates, which are there. So probably, most probably to avoid flooding in uh, Dholavira. Okay. Now, that's uh, some very important information about Dholavira. Uh, Indus Valley is different cities and different Indus Valley is different um, centers. Now, that's it in this video, guys. Let us see in the next video. And we will be, in the next video, we will see uh, streets, drains, Indus Valley architecture and we will conclude the Indus Valley chapter. Do subscribe to this channel, click on the bell icon and uh, do follow me on Telegram. In Telegram you can simply search my uh, group as uh, plus students, P-L-U-S-S-T-U-D-E-N-T-S. -S. Just go there. Any doubt you have, any information you need, you can go to that channel. Every day I put newspaper, important articles, the materials, all my books, my short notes for prelims, mains, everything is put on plus students. That's it from me today. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Bye-bye. You have a nice day. Thank you.